Hi, here we go with our video for 9.4 naming and writing formulas for acids and bases. So we're not going to really do a whole lot more on acids and bases at this point in the year. That's going to be a bit later. But if we're going to talk all about naming acids, we should at least define them. So an acid is a compound that contains one or more hydrogens and produces hydrogen ions also that H plus is a hydrogen ion when dissolved in water. Okay, So generally an acid is going to be H and some sort of anion. Some examples HCl, H plus, Cl minus. H2SO4, right, because it's one or more hydrogens, so we have here two hydrogens, and an anion. You remember from our polyatomic ions, SO4, SO4, 2 minus is an anion. So we have two hydrogens with this here anion. And another one, HNO3, which is an H plus with an NO3 minus. All right, so there's some rules. So the naming rules. Rule one, if the anion ends in ide, then the name of our acid would be hydro something ic acid. So, right, so in the case of HCl, right, it's hydrogen chloride, right? Hydrogen, because we call the hydrogen ion hydrogen here. The chlorine, when it becomes an ion, is called chloride, so it's hydrogen chloride. We change that to hydrochloric acid. Hydro Chloric acid. All right, we'll practice a bunch of these in class. Rule two: If the anion ends in "-ite", this time we're not going to say the hydro. It's whatever the base of it is. Us acid. So if we have H2SO3, which is hydrogen sulfite, remember your polyatomic ion SO3. Minus so H2SO3 hydrogen sulfite becomes sulfurous acid. And finally, our third rule: if the anion ends in eight, then it's going to be something ic acid without the hydro. All right, so this one had hydro something ic acid, like hydrochloric acid. Here there won't be that hydro. So for an example, HNO3. Right, we have our NO3 minus ion is going to be called nitric acid because this is a hydrogen nitrate HNO3 hydrogen nitrate so it's going to be nitric acid all right writing formulas we just kind of do the rules in reverse Okay. So let's say the name is hydrobromic acid. The fact that it says hydrobromic tells us that it's going to be a hydrogen for the, so the hydro, and the bromic acid means it's going to be hydrogen bromide. HBr. Okay. So chlorous acid means, right, the rule for that one is that the anion ends in ite. So we're going to have chlorite. So if we look on our reference table, we'll see that chlorite is ClO2 minus. So we have to put our H for our hydrogen since it's ClO2 minus 1, right, ClO2 minus. So we need one plus, so we have one H plus with it. So chlorous acid becomes HClO2. Ta-da. Okay, so then if it's sulfuric acid, right, the ic acid, if we look at our rules, means it's going to end in eight. So we're going to need sulfate, and sulfate is SO. For two minus, and since there's two of them, we're going to need two H pluses, which is going to give us H2SO4. All right, 
So, of course, we're going to practice a bunch of these in class, but at least you have these notes down. Next, names and formulas for bases. The base is kind of like the opposite of an acid. The base is a compound that produces hydroxide ions, OH minus, when dissolved in water. These are simply named just like any other ionic compounds. Generally, they're going to end in OH. So if it's NaOH, just like another one, sodium hydroxide, just like any other ionic compound. And then going backwards, if we say aluminum hydroxide, that means Al for aluminum. And then we have a certain number of OHs. Right? As you know, aluminum is going to tend to be a plus 3. And each OH is going to be a minus 1. So we can crisscross. And we end up with AlOH3. And since it's three OHs, not three H's, I have to put this OH in parentheses. Kind of like in math class, you know, where if you have uh, the three outside of the parentheses, it means it's distributed to the whole thing. There's three oxygens, three hydrogens, but it's three OH minuses. All right, that one was nice and short and easy. I'll see you guys in.